welcome everybody. I guess it could be morning or afternoon, depending on what part of the country you are today. But today we're going to talk about winterizing the trailer's liftgate system. We're going to obviously keep this pre this part of the presentation only on the electrical aspect of winterizing the trailer system, as we're not experts on hydraulics on that. So let's get started. Probably the largest issue always with lift gates is normally keeping the battery charged. That's uh, always a tough deal because the batteries are located on the trailer, which is a long ways from the charging source being the tractor. So in the winter, this becomes a, a very, very difficult task because of all the factors. Let's talk about the factors that cause all this problem. First of all, in cold weather, a battery is kind of like a tube of toothpaste. It's hard to get anything out and almost impossible to put current back in. And it doesn't matter what kind of battery it is, whether it's AGM or flooded, you're always going to have a great difficult, a very difficult time of putting charge back in a battery because when it's very cold, it doesn't want to take a charge. When you combine the next part of the issue is, like I said earlier, is the charging system's a long way from the battery. The all never stop to think. The all never at the front of the engine. We've got to have cables and then all the connections between a tractor and trailer that goes all the way back to batteries. Those batteries are typically, if you put a piece of string on those cables, all the connections, you might have 50 foot of cable from the front to the back. So that means I'm going to have voltage drop in that. So as you have more current flowing, as the batteries become discharged, the more current flows, the resistance of that cable or that circuit always remains the same. What happens is the more current you have, the more voltage drop you have in the system. And as that happens is you reduce the voltage that's applied back to the batteries. So if you have less voltage, which is nothing more than electrical pressure, you have a reduced ability for those batteries to take a charge because in cold weather, the only way you can take, make a battery take more charge is you either got to raise the voltage or you got to warm the battery up. And when it sits on a trailer in your Chicago and it's minus 10 degrees, you're not going to warm the batteries up. So the only thing you have availability to do is raise the voltage. The other issue that happens in winter, a lot of times trailers or lift gates are what we call power up and then they use gravity down. In very extreme cold weather, a lot of times the driver, the person using that lift gate, because hydraulic oil can get thicker and makes it a little bit more more timely to go down, they'll use power up and power down. So if you look at that, you look at all these factors of physics, the battery doesn't want to take a charge, we're a long ways away, you have voltage drop in the system, the, the hydraulic oil gets thicker in cold weather, all these factors are saying it's going to make it very, very difficult to charge those batteries. So what do you do? To winterize this, it's really a simple one, two, three step process. So let's go through the process of what you need to do to make sure that your system is in good of working order as you can before winter. The first thing is, always back to basics, is test the batteries. So how do we test the batteries? First thing you want to do is, is put a voltmeter across your batteries. They must be at 12.4 or higher or you don't have enough charge in those batteries to properly test them. So don't don't ever make a test with discharged batteries because those batteries could show up being bad when simply they don't have enough charge in them to properly test them. The next step is take all your cables off. Don't be lazy. Take all the cables off so that you can test each battery individually. Next thing is, is clean the lead pad area. That lead pad area is critically important because that's how you conduct electricity with that eyelet. The, the, the stainless steel stud simply is a mechanical fastening device that ho holds those two surfaces together. So make sure that lead pad area is clean. They have these new brushes. You can put them on cordless drills. You use them by hand, run them counterclockwise, but they're hollow in the middle, and they do a fantastic job of cleaning and dressing that lead pad area up. 
Next thing is, is you have to install lead adapters. Now you'll notice that we've got a set of vice grips. It's not enough just to put the lead adapter on. It's got to be securely touching that lead pad area or you could get erroneous results that could make you take batteries out that shows bad but really are not bad. The next thing, the last thing to do is use a good battery tester and test each battery while it's still in the battery box. After you conduct your test, obviously if the batteries all show up good, keep the batteries. If you have a battery or batteries that are showing up to be defective, you need to replace those batteries. Rule of thumb, I, you know, if one of the batteries is bad, try to keep the batteries within about a six month window. You want to keep those battery pack in balance as, as best you possibly can. So now you've tested the batteries, you know you got good batteries. Next thing we want to do is we want to check the charging system from the lift gates. And this would, today I'm going to just only address the trailer. So that means that when you plug either a dual pole using the aux pin on the seven way, you'd want to test from the front of the trailer to where the lift gate batteries are. So the first thing you want to do in this case, I'm going to show using a seven way is we you have a spatial adapter that plugs into the seven way. You can see the red boot. The red boot covers up your positive because that's going to be hot. And then you got a negative stud that now you can connect your tester to that seven way circuit in the front of the trailer. Now why do I have to have adapter? Because you can't get big alligator clips inside that small hole to get on those terminals. The next thing you do, if you have a DC-DC converter, which we show in this picture, is you've got to bypass it. The DC-DC converter steps up voltage so you can charge better in cold weather, but it will not allow current to flow back. So for this portion of the test, we make an adapter. You just simply plug in, take, unplug it from the trail charger or DC-DC converter, plug it up, it connects the batteries. Now your, pot, your cables at the front of the trailer are hot because they're connected directly to the battery. Now we put a, either use a tester or we have a device called a double check. Anyway, you can put a 20 amp load. You're pulling 20 amps from the batteries to the front of the trailer, opposite direction it normally goes, all the way back and then have a voltmeter is, what is your voltage at the lift gate batteries? That's your source, minus what you have at a voltage you're allowed a two volt drop on a system with a DC DC converter. Now, if you have a straight uh, dual pole, you're only allowed a half a volt drop in that circuit at 20 amps. If the circuit passes, you're done. Put it back, put, take the adapter cables off, put it back in. If the circuit fails, the testers will typically tell you where all your voltage drop is on the positive side, on the ground side. It's critically important that you look at both sides of the circuit because if 20 amps during this test, if 20 amps comes through the positive cable, 20 amps got to come back. The same thing is applicable when you're trying to charge batteries. Whatever charge is going out has to come back. So the ground cable is just as important as the positive cable. So now we know that we got good batteries. We know that our cable system is has a is in good shape. It has the ability to deliver the power back to the to the batteries. In this case, we have a DC DC converter, so I'm going to address how to check the DC DC converter. Now, <clears throat> the first thing you have to do before you turn anything on is unplug the front and have no power. You just want a static test of those batteries and we call that open circuit voltage because we can tell what the state of charge of those batteries is by measuring the open circuit voltage. In this case you should always have at least 12.4 volts across the battery. That means they're more than 65% state of charge. So no, but remember what that voltage is because it's very important when you do the rest of the test. The next item you have to do on the DC-DC converter is take a clip on amp meter. In this case, this meter will go up to uh, 400 amps, but we're going to use 40 because we're going to be at max about 27 amps. So you can see we put the clip on amp meter around the cable that comes from the DC to DC converter. The meter shows zero. We have zero to meter out every single time. Now you're ready to conduct the test. 
to do the test, you got to plug the charging system back in the tractor and start the tractor. I have to see more than 13.3 volts input voltage. That's how the system knows that everything is working correctly. So once it turns on, all you have to do now is put your voltmeter back across the batteries. If you remember right, we started this test, it was 12.4. Now we see the voltage is 1361, and you can see the current flows. That's as simple as how do you make the test. It is simply that I should see the voltage rise, and I should see current flow. So everybody, one of the questions I get asked all the time, what kind of current flow? It depends on what state of charge the battery is. If a battery is a real high state of charge, it might not put out 20 amps. If the battery is a real low state of charge, it might put out a lot of it. It might put out over 20 amps. So it just depends on what you say. But again, it's critically important when you do this is the first thing you want to do is determine what state of voltage is because you don't know where you started and then you only look at the ending voltage. You, you need to see those voltages rise. That tells you the unit's working. In this case, on this DC-DC converter, has a green light on it and the green light should be solid if you're looking inside of the unit. But that's as simple as everything is. It's a, a one, two, three process. If you do all of these things, uh, you should, you're should you going to put yourself in a, that piece of equipment in the best possible way that it can handle all the rigors of cold weather operation. The one thing I should mention before I open up the question and answer is the reason for the DC-DC converter is in cold weather, remember I said earlier is you have to have higher voltage to be able to charge cold batteries. This DC-DC converter has a temp pump inside of it. So when it, it's backed by the battery. So if it's in zero or minus 10 or whatever the temp is, it says, oh, it's cold outside. It automatically raises that voltage, even if the input's maybe nine volts by the time it gets back to DC, DC converter. And it, might, it might have to go to 15.5 in order to push current through those batteries. Again, before we get to the question and answers, uh, we will make RP, TMC's RP-179. This is a document that we did for TMC that talks about how to do all the testing on lift gates. Uh, whether you have dual pole, you're running off the reefer, uh, running through uh, the DC-DC converter like we talked today, uh, it's a long document, 64 pages, but it shows you exactly where to place your meters, how to do every one of the tests, and it gives you all the values of what it is. It's an incredible document. A lot of time and effort went into the document. Uh, all the liftgate manufacturers agree this is a good test. So does the OEMs. So uh, it, it's a great document. Again, we will make this available to you if you ask for it. And with that, I will open it up for questions and answers. And I'll give you a little time if you want to write any questions in. I did get one question. It says, should I always see the, the voltage on the DC-DC converter come to 14? And the answer is, no, and let me explain why. If the battery is in a real discharge condition, let's say you started out, and even though I said you shouldn't do this unless the batteries are charged, let's say the batteries are 11 8, so they're really discharged, and you turned it on to check the DC DC converter, it might only take 13.2 volts to push 20 some amps through the battery. So you're current limited, so it doesn't take very much voltage. That as that battery be, battery or batteries become more conductive, you would see the voltage rise. But when you initially make this test, the the current could be at its max, but it doesn't take the whole voltage, so you wouldn't see that type of voltage reading that you would normally expect to see. So that doesn't mean the unit's bad. Again, all you're looking for is the voltage to rise and the current. So if you got max current and the voltage isn't high as as what you would expect, that's normal. Well, 
Do we have any questions? I haven't seen any questions, so I guess, Celia, I'll turn it over to you.